the next feature which I want to talk about is the implementation of imperial units on the drawing side of Commosus. Now, this is a feature which was uh, requested heavily by our clients in the US market and also uh, those who are working for the US market because um, they heavily use the foot inch system a lot. So what we have done now is that uh, in on the drawing side, as you know, we have the dimensions and the dimensions previously uh, would have the units of millimeters and or centimeters or uh, one of those. But now we have brought this new option. If I were to double click on any one of these um, dimensions, you can see that the dimension property editor has changed slightly. First of all, uh, we now have this option of showing the unit as well. So if I press this one and say apply, you can see in which units uh, for that particular dimension um, we have uh, the units which we have turned on. So that's one uh, extra feature which now the user can uh, use and they can have multiple uh, dimensions in the same drawing and some of them can be millimeters and some of them can be centimeters or some other unit and they can specify there and uh, directly on the dimension itself uh, what the unit is. But what I'm talking about right now is the imperial units and for this we have made modifications to these three uh, inputs. Some of them are new and some of them have been modified. So there's this unit option which is now appearing over here. Uh, it, when you open that there is the option of millimeters, centimeters, meters, centimeter per meter. That's a new option. And there's a foot inch option now which is the one we're going to talk about. There is an inch option, once again, related to the imperial units, and also a feet option. So these three are uh, what we will be talking about. And besides this uh, unit option, there is another option for the precision. And previously, we had this, uh, we didn't have this uh, variable directly in this form. Uh, now we have these different precision levels, and the first ones are typically used in millimeters. So rounded off to the nearest 0.25 rounded off to the nearest tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth. But now we have added these th three extra ones, which is rounded off to the nearest eighth, nearest sixteenth, and the nearest uh, 32, one over 32. Uh, so this is another precision variable which we've added to the dimension. And in the format section, uh, you will see that in addition to the previous ones which we could use, now, first of all, you can um, choose them directly from a pull down um, combo box but at the end you will see that there's this extra option of slash divided by slash this is the one we will be using uh, frequently so let me just start off and give you an example first of all let me go to the feet option over here and say apply and when you when you do that you see that now those numbers have been so it says it's 3.314 feet now the reason it's giving it in in decimal format like that is because of my um, my my uh, format variable. The format variable, uh, I don't if I don't want it like that, I can select this newly added option, which is the slash divided by slash option. And if I do that, then you will see that it gives me now it says it's three feet, 157th over 500th of a foot. Now this is an odd way of saying that, but the reason for that is this precision variable now. Now, I, uh, with the with the foot inch system, the most commonly used precision variables are one over eight or sixteen or thirty two. So let me choose the one over thirty two variable for this, and say apply. And immediately you see that it is three feet five sixteenths of a foot. Now you might be wondering why did not why didn't it give this number to be thirty two? The reason why it does that is because whatever number it found. It could be further divided to a smaller number, so it automatically converts it the one over thirty two format into a one over sixteenth format because the the number is convertible to that. But this one, for example, it is twenty seven over thirty two, so it, it has remained in that form. So using these three new ones, so now if I were to, for example, change this feet one into inch and say apply, it will say, okay, it's thirty nine inches and three fourths of an inch. This one is 39 3 fourths. This one is 39 3 fourths. And this one is 46 1 over 16. Like I said before, despite the fact that I have chosen this 1 over 32 option, 
it will round it off uh, downwardly if it's for perfectly divisible by a smaller multiplier. So if I change this, for example, to 1 over 8, maybe it'll change that. Yeah, so it changes uh, this one uh, in that case. Now, uh, like I showed you in the beginning as well, there was this foot inch option as well, which then goes, uh, so it basically converts it into some feet and some inches. And when we do that, now it says it's three feet, three three-fourths of an inch, and three feet, ten one-eighths of an inch. So these are very convenient, and they've been added, these imperial units, like I said, primarily for the U.S. market or for those who are working with the, with the U.S. market. You now have the option of showing the units as well. Obviously, showing the units in this case is meaningless because you're already seeing the units on the screen. But when you're working with millimeters or centimeters or other, other units besides feet inch, you can open up this uh, show unit option as well. So this is a very uh, this, is, this is a new feature. This is not only available in the general arrangement drawings, but also for your part drawings and your assembly drawings. All you need to do is just uh, just change the settings of the dimensions uh, to whatever unit style uh, you desire, and the part drawings and the assembly drawings will be created accordingly. The next thing which I want to talk about is uh, regarding the improvements which we have made uh, in the table object in Commosis. Now, as you know, the table object uh, can be created anywhere in your drawings. And this uh, table object is used by the automatic drawings as well, like your um, part drawings and your assembly drawings uh, or any other drawing. And uh, you can also create this table object uh, manually if you if you wanted to. Now, the first um, very useful um, thing which we've added to these tables uh, is that now if you move their, them around, they snap to corners of objects. So if you if you notice, if I bring it close to this view, it snaps to that view. If you bring it close to the top right corner, it will just snap to the top right corner. If you bring it from the outside, it will snap from the outside. Similarly, if I were to take it down, let's let's make it go over here. If I were to zoom into the top right corner of the uh, or the bot bottom left corner or the top left corner, you can see that it is snapping to these. Similarly, if I take it over here, I can make it snap to this view over here. So this ability to now snap to uh, any of the four corners of the nearby objects has been added and this really helps the user in aligning tables to other tables tables to the papers uh, to the whatever paper size you're using or to even viewports the next feature which we have added to the table is the ability to now enter multi-line text inside a cell so previously inside the cell we could just have one text uh, one one line text but now if we double click on any one of these texts, the text dialog box appears. And if we want, uh, we can write a multi-line text over there, pressing enter, uh, multi-line text over there. I mean, we press OK, and that multi-line text appears uh, in, that, um, in, that, in that cell. And previously, this was not possible. Now let's talk about text rotation inside the cells. So for that, if I double click on this table and I go to the second tab, cells tab, I can see that it has four rows. And if I select, for example, this is row number two. If I select the second row, I can see the contents in the columns. These, these are the three columns and they all have the text, namely text inside them, as you can see on the screen as well. So if I can select any one of these, any one of these columns, and let's say I select the first one, and now if I go and select this text rotation option. So if I select that and give it a 90 degree rotation and say apply, then the text is uh, changed. The, the, te the text is now given a 90 degree rotation and becomes a vertical text. If I want, I can change the location. I can put it on the left side or on the right side. And if I want, I can even give it an offset. Uh, from this param using this parameter and this offset is then applied to the alignment so as you can see the alignment can be set uh, from left middle right and from top middle bottom in those senses as well and furthermore offsets can be given to it 
uh, and these are features which weren't available before. We can, of course, change the 90 degree to a 180 degree text, which will basically reverse it, or we can give it a 270 degree test text, which will make it look down. So we have these four angle options. And if you bring it back to zero, then the text comes back to its original location. Now, another thing which we can do is that, for example, if I were to double click on this text and write a long sentence, let's say I write the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and enter that. Now, as you can see, this the, the, the length of this sentence is, um, is enough to basically cross over into the other cell, and I don't want that. I want it to wrap inside the in, within the same cell. So what I can do in that case is I can select the table, go to the second row, select this, this text from here, and, I say, and say wrap text. And when I say wrap text, then that text can be wrapped inside that particular cell, as you can see on the screen. If I come back to this text rotation feature and convert this long wrap text into a vertical text, for example, by choosing the 90 degree option, you can see that I can even do that and it now wraps in the other direction. So this is very useful and you can create lots of different combinations and styles for, for some very specialized tables, which you might have. Now, of course, uh, you have complete control over the height of each row and, uh, and each column and that, that kind of thing. So if, if I see that this is not fitting perfectly, what I can go is just select the second row and give it a different height, for example, and uh, the height will be adjusted uh, according to whatever I want. One very handy feature which wasn't available before is the ability to merge cells. So if I wanted to merge this cell and this cell, all I need to do is select the text of the first one, press control, select the second one, right click, and say merge the selected cells. And when I do that, immediately the middle border is removed and the whole thing becomes one cell. And even the texts of each individual, um, of both the cells are, are maintained in their respective orientations. So if I wanted to uh, double click on this text, I can take it to the side, for example, and even if I wanted to give it give it an off offset, for example, uh, of 12, or whatever number I want. So now I have this merged cell in which I have control over, this, over the texts which were there inside the original cells as well. So this ability to merge the cell is very handy. And if I'm not happy with that, I can just select the cell and right click and say explode the selected cells. And when I do that, the, the two cells are brought back to their original uh, positions. This merging, incidentally, can also be done vertically. So if I select this text and this text and say merge cells, then those two are merged together now. But now, obviously, the, the individual text, so if, I, if I, this one is a vertical text, the other one is like that, I can take that in there and say I want to take it to the right, and from there I can give it, uh, an off, or I can take it to the middle, and that's probably enough in this case. So I can do stuff like this. I can merge vertical cells as well. So this is a very handy feature which allows you to build uh, very complicated tables uh, if need be. Another feature which we have is now if you select um, the table itself, you see that these handles appear on the left-hand side. And they're there to add new rows or to sub subtract or delete existing ones. So if I just press this plus button over here, another uh, row is added. If I press this one, another one is added. If I press another one, another one is added. And it's as simple as that. You can then, of course, like I said, move it around and make it snap to whatever position which you want. Uh, but this really makes the addition and subtraction, if I wanted to remove one, for example, if I wanted to remove this last one, I'll just need to remove it like that. So this is a very handy feature as well, which has been now added to the standard table um, object which we have in Comosis. Now let's talk about another feature, which is the ability to create um, containers within these uh, cells. So let me just create a container first. Let me, for example, create a little circle over here. You can use these objects which we have in Comosis, as you know, to create all kinds of shapes and uh, sizes and whatever you want. So let me just uh, zoom in and uh, say I want to do something like this. I want to create a horizontal line. And then I want to create, for example, another rectangle uh, somewhere over here like that. 
and this is a shape which I want. I can make it more complicated, of course, but I, this is this much is enough to explain the feature. What I need to do is I can convert this whole thing into a group. So I have this group option over here, and when I press that, I can give that thing a name. I can call it whatever. Let's call it G1. And now this is G1. This whole thing is G1. And the G1 can be moved around. It has nothing to do with the table at the moment. It's a separate drawing I have made on the side. But if I go inside now, if I double click on the table, go to the cells and go to my first row, for example, and the second text, which is this one. And if I say convert to container, now when I say that, this container list comes up and the G1, which I just created, is given to me. And when I do that, it is converted into a container. And now the uh, the container fills that cell. So this is a, another handy feature which we have, which allows us to actually put different shapes and symbols which we have created uh, inside Comosis, inside any cell which we want. After having created this, uh, put this container inside the cell, what I can also do, of course, is uh, give it some orientation. So I, I can put the middle orientation like that, and it's put in the middle. I can take it to the left if I want like that i can give it further offset so i can you know basically give it an any you know, just it behaves just like a text so i can create any shape um, this shape can inc include other things as well and the whole group will be put inside this text so this will allow you to put things like maybe some um, logos or some shapes which you want in your table some um, sometimes we have very specific requirements we want to show a steel profile the cross section of a profile and this kind of thing is usually difficult to do in tables but with this feature you can create these containers groups and then put them inside your uh, your tables very easily now let me talk about some database improvements which we have made in this uh, in this new version of Comosis. and uh, as you know we are expanding globally and new markets are being reached so we are constantly adding new profiles and new um, bold databases, profile databases to our existing database. And uh, what I want to talk about right now is that we've made some, if I were to double click on this beam, for example, uh, you can, if I press this, this button over here, as you know, which is uh, used to open the profiles database, you can see that this has generally, this area has been renewed in general. And what you're seeing on the screen is that we've added the Russian profile set. The I profiles, um, all the I profiles are there. In addition to the I profiles, the, the pipe profiles are there as well. The angles, the channels, uh, all of them have been added to, uh, to the database. And with this capability now, uh, our clients uh, using the Russian uh, interface will be able to uh, add the Russian profiles directly from within Comosis. They won't need to add them, add the data, add the profiles separately. But we'll be providing these the, the, these profiles off the shelf. Now, as you can also see that with each profile, their uh, their ghost related description, the ghost standard related description, has also been added. So this is very convenient, and the, the, this information can later be uh, used directly in the in the templates which we have also provided. Now let's continue with uh, the, uh, the improvements we've made regarding the Russian market. And I want to talk a little about the templates which we have provided, uh, automatic off the shelf templates which we have provided. So uh, here you can see on the screen, there's a little uh, structure which I've created. It's just simple four columns, four beams, some floor beams some connections and some base plates, etc. It can be much more complex, as you know. But uh, once you have created your structure and you have done your uh, numbering, which you know, and you've done your drawing settings for the assembly drawings and the part drawings and the layout settings, etc., which are provided off the shelf, uh, they are very simple to do and they've been explained in some other videos. All you need to do is just uh, select any part, right-click it, say create drawing and say create assembly drawing or similarly you could go to any part say right click and say create a part drawing or like we already know we could just select the whole building right click and say create the part or assembly drawings 
depending on our uh, settings. Now, when we do that, uh, let me go to the drawings. I've, I've created the, the assembly drawing and the part drawing of this plate, uh, and I'm going to show them to you. So if I were to go to the drawing side by double clicking, this, double -clicking on that button and open, opening the drawings manager, I can see that the, the plate, the drawing of that single part has been created over here. And if I were to open that uh, and zoom into that, you can see that the plate, uh, the drawing has been uh, created, the plate has been dimensioned, the single part drawing is pretty clear and you, can, you have all the customization options, which you know. But on the right hand side, you can see that the template has been provided off the shelf for the single part drawings. Um, and it is exactly in accordance with the standards, with the with the ghost standards, and all the um, the title blocks and all all the titles have been given, the headings have been given, uh, the format is exactly in accordance with the requirements. If I were to go down, then we also see the title block over here, and this one is also provided exactly in accordance with uh, with the Russian standards. And we have the capabilities, I'm not going to show them over here, of, inc of including signatures as well as all the customized uh, information which we have uh, in the title block. So this is very convenient. All you need to do is just create your model. And once you've created your model, you do the numbering and you uh, just right click on any part. And the part drawing will be created, as you've seen, uh, directly off the shelf without any customization being needed. Now let's move on to the assembly drawing of the column which I talked about. And let me open, double click on that drawing and open it. And as you can see, once again, the, the drawing is pretty neat and clean. The, the column was slightly complicated, but we have all the single parts and everything over here. But more importantly, once again, we have the off the shelf uh, tables, the assembly tables directly uh, without any customization being needed. All you need to do is just create your model and create the drawings. And as you can see on the screen, this is exactly in accordance with the requirement uh, of the market, uh, with the requirement of the, st of the standards. And the assembly drawing has been given, the individual pieces have been given, the material summary has, has been given as well. So this is exactly what we want. We don't want to uh, waste a lot of time customizing these, um, these blocks, which are pretty complicated and they require a lot of effort. Uh, but we have got, we have taken that uh, we have made that effort and we have created these off the shelf tables for you and it's not just the part drawings and the assembly drawings for which we have created the tables for you let me uh, go back to the drawing manager and open a general arrangement drawing over here uh, over here we have uh, just it's just an empty drawing i haven't added anything on it you can see the whole structure over here or you could filter it if you wanted to, you could see part of the structure. But whatever you're seeing in the views, what you could do is you could go to your tables, you go open your steel tables, and over here we have the option of creating the steel assembly detail and part detail tables, which we just saw. But I'm gonna be talking about or showing you the rolled metal specification table as well. So if we just press that button, it's gonna take whatever it sees in the drawing. And if I were to zoom in over there, you can see that it has created this very nice table uh, exactly according to the size specifications, uh, the, the height of the rows, the width of the columns, the titles, uh, all the contents have been taken from the model. As you can see, it's very neat, very clean. No customization is required from the user. It comes directly off the shelf. When you, when you, when you buy Commosses, you get these tables uh, with it. So this is very handy and very useful. It saves a, it saves a lot of time lot of customization time because normally when uh, clients when when users buy such advanced software they spend months sometimes trying to get these tables ready for the market but we are providing them off the shelf and you can use them directly the last thing which i want to talk about now is the uh, the drawing list template which we have also provided in this version of commosis off the shelf and as you know uh, in the drawings manager you can have hundreds of drawings, uh, you, can, you can have lots of part drawings, assembly drawings, you can filter those drawings if you, uh, in this table, you can create a list of only the GA drawings, for example, you can, uh, you can create a drawing list of only the assembly drawings or the part drawings, or basically any selection of drawings which you do. But once you do that, you can, uh, using that filter, you can, you can go to the, you can create a, an empty drawing uh, called the drawing list, 
and you can go inside that and you can actually if you were to um, if you what you can actually do is you can create this drawing uh, table the table of the drawing list inside uh, that empty drawing and it can be exactly according to the filter which you have whatever names you, you have given to the drawings they will appear over here there'll be a serial number and you can have your own remarks or notes as well if you want to so very handy very very useful features uh, once again we hope that the market uh, will be able to use uh, commosis as it is directly off the shelf and that's in our opinion very important